Yeah, cause uh... There are no rules but one. Drink Jägermeister at minus 18 degrees Celsius. Obviously, now we talked about uh, the, uh, the Arcane, the, the, the Wally West, and, uh, you know, many of these characters that you also gave voice to, like, for example, Penguin in the uh, Batman game, uh, they had previous incar- incarnations, right? Uh, Correct. My one, yeah, my Joker. Yeah. Batman Hush. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, one of my favorite portrayals is actually Danny DeVito's Penguin. Uh, do, do you look at those performances uh, before or... Or to to you know, no, maybe not get no. I mean, I've seen I've seen Danny DeVito's uh, uh, portrayal of the Penguin. I've you know, and I've gotten a chance to, you know, take in a lot of entertainment media. You know, just as an actor, you you know, you you go see movies, you watch TV, you you know, and but when I'm building a character, I just I close the door to every other performance I've seen and I read the script that's in front of me and I talk to the director and everybody I want to see what the world is like that they're creating because Danny DeVito's Penguin wouldn't fit in Telltale Games Batman no, no, no. right and and neither would a lot of portrayals of the Penguin you know um, and Oz as he's known in that game he it's a completely different telling of how Penguin came to know Bruce Wayne and whether or not, you know, they knew each other in childhood and he's this sort of slick Londoner a bit and uh, he plays, you know, two roles, uh, you know, he is unique to that universe, the portrayal of the Penguin that I created, you know, oh, Bruce, this is why we can't have nice things, you know, he, 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 he plays the CEO, but then he's also, you know, Fire the moderator. You know, he's also, you know, got the mask on and he's going nuts. So, you know, it's to me, you I couldn't have seen him a, as someone else's penguin. He, he always had to be this sort of handsome version. It, it almost 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 likable in a hateable way. Right? Sort of the he almost has gives Bruce Wayne a run for his money in the handsome department, as strange as that sounds, but in a in a sort of, you know, ruffian kind of way. And I think that adds to the Penguin's power in that story, right? He's not this sort of ugly stepchild forgotten thing. You know, it's, it's a really fascinating telling of, of, of Oswald that he could have, in another life, been Bruce Wayne. Yeah, and pretty cool. Well, also... Also, in like, uh, Danny DeVito has like a lot of performance, he has a lot of Tim Burton universe around it. Of course, yeah. it does. Yeah, it does. You know, and I would say it's a cartoon brought to life, you know, Tim Burton stuff. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, and Telltale Games is, you know, they tried to be very realistic, even though the animation and game style was more simplistic. They always wanted the performances to be more grounded like you were reading a comic book so it was kind of like the inverse right that 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 tim's is real people acting like cartoons and telltale games is cartoons wanting to sound like real people can you can could you do a little bit of olive under since i'm a big harry potter fan oh yeah that's right um harry potter uh, magic um uh awakens it just came out i think yeah. that's, that's what it's called um and I got the honor, because John Hurd is no longer with us, to play Ollivander um, in that game. And I've always loved doing the voices from Harry Potter. And uh, so, um, curious, very curious. It's curious that you should be destined for this one when its brother gave you that star. Though we do not speak his name, but it's clear we can expect Great things from you. After all, he who must not be named is great. Well, terrible, but okay. Uh, that's not so bad. Yes. I would like to know about one three quarters, Applewood, hmm, Dragon Heart. Like, he, it, it's great because, uh, since it already existed as a voice print. I, I, it was 
all I had to do was honor the original performance and getting to say new words as Ollivander is such a, just a treat. No, no, definitely not. Yeah. So it's <laughs> lots of. It's <laughs> awesome. I would like to have you when I read the book next time when I open the first <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can also do your voice. Hat. I, I can do a bunch of good voices from that, that show, yeah. Difficult. Very difficult. Plenty of courage. And not a bad mind either. But where to put you? You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slytherin. <laughs> not Slytherin, eh? That'd be great, you know. And Slytherin could help you on the path to great. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. That's a big Well, I always like. <laughs> well, they had the the the, the best the uh, the best place to live, Griffin. But you know, the best they sure Griffin. did. I I did love the the Harry Potter um, Hogwarts Legacy. I did love that game. It was quite something. I got to play it with a dear friend of mine, and you know, it was uh, lots of fun. You did you also do some motion capture? Yes, I've done lots of motion capture. I've, I've played Dante in Uncharted, Golden Abyss. I've played Schizo in Days Gone. Um, I've played um, uh, uh, this beautiful hunchback character called Chum Bucket in Mad Max, the video game. But the video game, I've, Mad Max, right? Yeah, I've played a lot of characters in motion capture. So, yeah, I love to do it. Yeah, and how... How different is it from acting? Voice acting. Well, I mean, it is. It is voice acting, but it it has the movement of stage, the voice acting of cinema, um, the facial expressions of cinema, um, and the imagination of a black box theater, like of childhood, because you don't actually have a costume on, but you like I played Uka. In Gears of War Tactics, I did both the voice and the body. So whenever you see Ukon in that giant robe, that's me. <laughs> Acting like a seven-foot-tall lizard creature in a robe. With mouth full of teeth. <laughs> With mouth full of teeth, yeah. I mean, the, the physicality of him is very slow and kind of lumbering, and he's got this, this long, flowy outfit on that I had to honor. He couldn't put his arms in certain ways, you know. And... It really challenges the rest of my imagination. That's one of the things I love about motion capture. I would do motion capture every day if I could. It's so much fun. It's like being a kid again. Literally, you put on this suit and you pretend about what you're wearing. You pretend about the gun you're holding. You pretend about the stairs you're walking up or just a bunch of boxes. And they're showing it to you on a screen what it might look like in a light 3D rendering. And you have to just replace the rest of it with your imagination. And it's, again, the body movements of stage, like you do in the theater, but the voice and the face of cinema, it, it's it's quite a combination. And not everybody yeah. can do it. They wear the suit and they get their brain just, sometimes they freeze up or they just do it like they're on set of a movie and then nothing, re nothing reads because they're not doing anything with their bodies. So yeah, it takes a special set of talents and uh, I seem to be uniquely suited to it. And I look <laughs> Yeah, we we mentioned motion uh, capture also when we had Chris Brewster a few weeks ago here. Yeah, and I think Walt is taking Andy Circus for granted for his motion capture. Yeah, definitely. Oh, they are. I think Andy Circus deserves an Oscar, and I think because the the computer is doing so much work to change the actor's face, they're not realizing how much of that is Andy Serkis, that it's like, or it's all him. It's all him. Like, they don't yeah. realize that really the facial expressions, because you put the tracking dots everywhere, I mean, they can change and make some adjustments to that, but not a ton. I mean, you could you can make adjustments to superheroes with CG uh, to their performance. It's no different. And he, what he is bringing to a character is a fully formed thing, just like any other actor. And it's frustrating. To be honest, it's it's, and in many ways, it's more difficult than acting in a set with clothes that you're wearing that remind you who you are as a character with set pieces that show you 
you know, that are the thing that you're touching. He has to engage more of his imagination than a character who is just a person in a suit. Yeah. So in a way, I think his job is harder. I don't want to discount anything that other actors are doing. I don't, I don't want that. I would say it's different, but it certainly engages more of your imagination. There, there's whole science behind it. When you, you, when you hear Andy or other guys who played apes in War for the Planet Apes uh, trilogy, yeah. and, and you're just amazed how they are putting such performance in such yeah. roles in that movie. And yeah, with the movement yeah. and everything. Yeah, especially with the movement. Yeah. Uh, yep. And I, I was also amazed. I got I to work saw... with those guys, actually. I got to work with some of the guys who were part of those, those apes on that stage in Canada because of the, you know, um, uh, Ukon in Gears of War Tactics. Uh, we used some of that talent. It's cool. Anyway, sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> well, I, I wanted to say also about uh, um, after Logan came out, you know, and there's a, a scene in the ending when Logan is running through the forest and th th they published the video with Hugh Jackman just uh, 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 giving voiceover for that scene where he's in the studio and he's rampaging, yeah. screaming. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lasting impact on everybody who watched. And is yeah. it something similar in your studios when you are uh, <laughs> yes. doing voiceover? Yes, 100%. It, it's me. I look like Hugh Jackman on the treadmill. <laughs> you, know, where I, uh, you know, if you're fighting, you are 100% fighting. Because mm -hmm. if you're just kind of pretending, you're, you're, it will pick it up that it's not as intense. So yeah. when, I'm, when I'm behind the mic, I mean, for example, when I played the Joker in Batman Hush, and we did the alley scene where the Joker is getting choked by Batman, I actually have my hand around my throat. You can ask the, the voice directors who you know, directed me, Wes Gleason. Like, I, I was literally like, I want you to break your bones. You know, like, and, and I'm, he's throwing me around in the alley scene, and I'm like throwing myself around so that the sounds that I'm making are, they're real. Mm -hmm. You want them to sound so that the audience feels what you're going through. And you have you put your body through those physicality uh, to get the performance. Of course you do. Yeah. We stay genuine, uncensored, and unscripted, and we always will, as we have to order our usual. Share us, subscribe us, and stay tuned until the next Wednesday. Iguzo.